Hey guys, I'm Michael here from the Tech Dungeon. Hey, I just wanted to do a video. Uh, obviously, we've had some people who've over the uh, last year or so that the LED display's been available. Some have bought it, like when we first brought it out at the BCF East in 2023. We just got back from BCF East uh, 2024. And we've had people buy it online after Adrian from Adrian's Digital Basement showed it. And then we've had some uh, who purchased it at uh, Torg, which is a Columbus, Ohio gaming convention we went to. We had some purchase it at a BCF Midwest. So we've sold it at a lot of different places and obviously most recently here at BCF East 2024. But one of the things we do is we do give you free updates. So you can see here, we got kind of like picture in picture. So we've got my display and we've got a, the cable's not plugged in. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to plug this in. So you can see you've got it plugged in and it runs through its uh, animations. Now, if you see this Atari logo come up first and it's animated, you've pretty much probably got the most latest version if you're watching this video right around the time of release. Uh, but what it's doing is when you first turn it on, it just goes through all its animations and it'll continually cycle. But what we're gonna wanna do is let's say we bought it back at BCF, uh, let's say we bought it back at BCF Midwest. Uh, if we go to the Tech Dungeon, and specifically if you go to techdungeon.xyz slash LED flash, which is mentioned down here in the web-based firm, firmware updater, but we're gonna go ahead and just go to that right here. So you can see this is the LED firmware installer. Now when you connect the display to your computer, and I know this works on Windows and Linux, I do not have a Mac to test it, but it should work similarly. But if you go into uh, your browser, I believe you need uh, Chrome. I think Edge might work. I don't believe this will work with Firefox uh, because you basically have to have serial port access through the browser. Uh, but I know it works with Windows uh, and Linux and it works through Chrome. So one of the first things you're gonna wanna do is, and we're gonna do this example on Windows. If you're a Linux user, you're probably uh, capable of figuring it out. But on Windows, we wanna see what port the display is plugged into. So we go to our device manager. I just right clicked on the taskbar, hit device manager, and then I went to ports. And you can see here, you're gonna look for a 340 device. Uh, you can see the USB serial CH340 COM3. So we're gonna wanna remember that our display is plugged into COM3. If you do not see the USB serial device, and you might have more than, than one, but the one that's listed as CH340 is your display. You can verify it by unplugging the display and it should disappear. But I know this is right. So we know it's on COM3. If you don't see this, you may have to go here to follow this link on the website. That'll take you to download the drivers for Windows. And you can install those. It might require you to reboot your computer. If so, do that and then come back to this address. So what you can do is you can select which version of the firmware you want. Most recent at the top. Now I do have a dimmer brightness version of the latest update that I just did for VCF East. So if you have one of the original models uh, from 2023 VCF East, those were probably the first ones that we ever, ever really sold. They did not have the acrylic diffuser uh, or the acrylic uh, protection and it's kind of like a smoky gray on the front of it. So we had to make the display brighter when we added that but for users who have the original VCF East 2023, not this year, 2024, you won't have that uh, uh, acrylic. So it might be too bright. So you can select this dimmer version. Or if you're just wanting it to be a little bit uh, dimmer because maybe I've had one guy said he likes to leave it on in his apartment and it's a one bedroom apartment, so it's too bright. So I gave him a dimmer version. Now you can do it yourself here with the updater. So. We're just gonna pick the most recent. Updates are always free, so anytime I put up a new version, you can come to check this webpage out and you'll see maybe a V6, a V7, V8, et cetera, et cetera. So once we have our version selected, we'll hit connect. And you can see here, it's asking like which serial port. And we know it's COM3. We're gonna hit connect. And it's gonna say connecting. And then you hear it says install LED firmware V5. So we're gonna click it. And then it lets you know that this is gonna erase. Uh, and once I do this, you're gonna see the display pause because the processor that's running my animation loops is gonna stop. So I'm gonna hit install. And you kind of saw those little white pixels, that white and green in the bottom right on the display popped up. It's now froze. 
and you can see the browser says that it's installing the LED firmware v5 erasing and this takes a minute to do and it, it did that now it's going through the install of the firmware so again this takes a minute or so um, and then once it's done it will reboot and the display will start running the latest version so you can easily jump around to these different versions if you'd want to see what it looked like at BCF East, you know, what changes occurred. There you can see it's done, the display's rebooted, and now it's doing the new firmware, which is what I already had on there. Uh, but that's how easy it is to do the update. And then you can see here it'll say installation complete, we'll say next, and we'll just close this. So that's how easy it is to do. I will be making another video to show you how to use the WLED project if you want to play with their software on the display. They've got some stuff that I could, you know, that lets you do a bunch of different visual effects and things you can control with your phone and stuff, and that will work here on our display. So I'll do another video here in a day or two, kind of showing you how to do that. You can do that on the display. If you get bored with that and you want to come back to my firmware, you can do that. If you want to play with it yourself, we give you some information on how to program the display. So you can do your own code, you can run my code, or you can run WLED project and possibly others. Uh, but the WLED project also lets you update through your browser. So it's very easy to set up. You gotta do a little bit of configuration because it's made for variance uh, size displays. So you do have to configure it uh, for our 16 by 16 matrix, tell it what type of LEDs. But I'll show that in another video. And that's how easy it is to set up the display and update the firmware and all that. Uh, biggest hurdle you'll have is if your Windows system doesn't detect it right off the bat, you may need these these uh, drivers that you, I put a link here uh, for. So you grab those drivers, run them, and I think for most people, you'll be good to go. On Linux, it's a little bit different. You just need to, when you plug it in, um, most of the newer Linux kernels, I believe, have support for the, the CH340 devices. Uh, and if you don't see it, you can do like an LS USB and then a, the, the DMSCG, D message I call it, command to kind of see like where the display is showing up. And then you can just pick that in your browser. So, very easy. Uh, don't have a Mac OS uh, X or 10 or whatever the hell it's called. So can't really help you out much there. If somebody does do the update on a Mac, feel free to post a comment saying if there was anything tricky or anything different that you had to do. So anyway, uh, if you'd like the display, you can see them on our storefront. And uh, as always, updates are free and we will keep churning out new content. If you have any suggestions for things you'd like to see on it, characters, content, animations, or whatever, let me know. Take care.